Christology from above and Christology from below. Christology from above always tells that Jesus Christ is Son of God. Now, in other words, it, it implies the Messiah, the Anointed One. But God takes it a pleasure to, re, to redeem the people. He incarnates in the person of Jesus Christ and He died for the sake of the humanity. That means God taking the form of a flesh and He died for the sake of humanity. That's why we call that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son and is the incarnation of God. Now I request the question is standing behind the mic place in the center to pose this question to Brother Afa. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Atif and I am an engineering student. My question to you is, Brother Afa, you have said in your talk that Christians generally quote certain verses to prove Jesus as God. Can you please expound those verses from of the Bible? Brother has posed a question that during the course of my talk, I spoke about certain verses of the Bible which are very often quoted by the Christian scholars, by the professors, to prove that Jesus Christ is Almighty God and the very commonly quoted verses of the Bible are from Gospel of John chapter number 1 verse number 1 which even Reverend B. Wilson David also quoted which reads that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the second is from Gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 6 which says where Jesus Christ may peace be upon me is supposed to have said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the fa father but through me and the other is from book of Revelations, chapter number 1, verse number 8, which even Reverend B. Wilson David also quoted, where it says that I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord. So these are the three very commonly quoted verses of the Bible by many of the Christian missionaries to prove that Jesus Christ was Almighty God according to the Christian Bible. Now let us see whether Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, did he actually claim to be Almighty God according to these verses of the Bible? The first is from Gospel of John chapter number 1 verse number 1. That is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As I told you, Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, he did not speak English language. The Bible was not written in the English language for the first time. The Old Testament, it was written in the Hebrew language. And the New Testament, it was written in the Greek language. Now, if you go to the original manuscripts, of the Bible, the original book of the Bible, the Greek word there used for the first time when the word God com comes for the first time is Hothios. Hothios in Greek language it means the God, God with capital G. And the second time the word God comes there, the Greek word that is used there is Tonthios. Tonthios means any God, a God with small g. There is a particular type of translating the verses into the English language by the Americans, by the Westerners, that if they consider it as the proper noun, they translate it with the capital letter. And if it is a common noun, they translate it with the small letter. A God means a prophet of God. It doesn't mean that he is Almighty God. And if we agree for the sake of argument that Jesus Christ is God there according to Gospel of John chapter number 1 verse number 1 because he is word and he is God. And the word and God, they, they are used as synonyms. They are used interchangeably. Now if you substitute the word God with the word word, W-O-R-D. Substitute the word God with the word W-O-R-D. Now the verse of Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 1, it reads as, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with word, and the word was word. Does it make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. Did Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, claim to be Almighty God according to these words? I said there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, himself said, I am God or where he said, worship me. These statements you will never find in the Bible. The second verse that is very commonly quoted is from Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6, where Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, is supposed to have said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. I say I agree with it. I don't have any problem. Every prophet of God was the way, was the truth, was the life for his own people in his own time. Moses, may peace be upon him, was the way, the truth and the life at his time to his people. 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the way, the truth, and life for the people to come till the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the glorious Quran, Atiullah wa tiur Rasul. Obey Allah, and you obey the messenger. Obey the messenger. That means you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. In Surah Al Imran, Surah number three and number thirty-two. In Surah Al Imran, Surah number three and number one hundred thirty-two. In Surah Nisa, Surah number four and number fifty-nine. In Surah Maida, Surah number five and number ninety-two. Surah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam surah number 47 ayah number 33 in surah Mujadila surah number 58 ayah number 13 in surah Taghabun surah number 64 ayah number 12 and many other places Allah says atiullah wa tiur rasul obey Allah and obey the messenger does it mean that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is god it doesn't mean that you only have to follow the commandments which are given by the prophets and the messengers of god which are revealed unto them by god almighty the third very commonly quoted verse is from book of revelations Chapter number one, verse number eight, where Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, is supposed to have said, "I am the Alpha and the Omega." These words, Alpha and the Omega, they are the first and the last letter in the Greek language. The first letter, like in the English language, is A, and the last letter is Z. In the Greek language, Alpha is the first letter and Omega is the last letter. Therefore, they interpret that here Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, claim that I am the first and the last, says the Lord God Almighty. But again, if you go to the original text of the Bible, if you go to the original manuscripts of Greek, this misunderstanding it arose actually because of the mistranslation of the Bible in the English language of the King James version. They mistranslated the original word, which reads in the Greek language as "legei kurios hotios." They chopped off the hotios in the translation. Now, if you rightly translate, even if you read the New International Version and the American Standard Version of the Bible, they rightly translate these words that "I am the Alpha and the Omega," says the Lord Almighty God, Jesus Christ. May peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. He is merely repeating the words of Almighty God. That God Almighty said that I am the Alpha and the Omega. That God Almighty said that I am the first and the last. So, according to these verses of the Bible, Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, he never claimed to be divine. He never claimed to be to, to be Almighty God. He said, "Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord." Hope that answers your question. We'll take the next question from Sister Sai to Reverend Wilson. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, my brother is for uh, my question is for uh, Reverend uh, Sir. My question is like Brother Rafaq said in his uh, talk. Sister, that your name, your qualification. Yeah, I'm Farheen Banu. I'm pursuing my graduation final year, and Alhamdulillah, I'm a part-time dai as well. Um, Brother Rafaq said in his talk that there is no verse in the Bible where Jesus said, or else rather claimed, in his own words that I am God. So I want to know whether is there any verse in the Bible where Jesus said he is God? Could you please explain? Thank you very much for this question. The problem lies with the revelation of God. God revealed Himself sometimes through prophets. That you will find in the letter of Hebrews, first chapter, first four verses. God revealed Himself to prophets, and then finally, God revealed Himself through His Son. Jesus Christ. That means when I say whether Jesus Christ truly acknowledges that He is the God, it is a matter of revelation. God reveals Himself in different forms at different periods. At times, sometimes God reveals, reveals Himself as the Creator, and God reveals in Jesus Christ as the Redeemer, and God reveals Himself as the Sustainer of the whole, the 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 entire community. That's why. It is only an, an interpretation that God, we believe firmly that God incarnated Himself, and the, the Word became flesh, and the flesh is Jesus Christ. That means God is Jesus Christ. That is the conclusion. Thank you very much. We'll take the next question from sisters to brother Afaq. As Assalamu alaikum. Uh, myself is Aisha, and I'm an MA and a housemaker. Uh, brother, I want to ask uh, uh, the And my question is connected to previous question, previous answer. Uh, I want to know how far the David Raju is uh, right in his answer. Sister has posed me a question saying that how far is Reverend B Wilson David is right in his answer 
to the previous question when he said that God will reveal unto the mankind himself in the form of the prophet. Sister, according to the Holy Bible, according to the Holy Bible of the Christians, if you read Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 37, there we are told that God Almighty will never meet the humankind in the form of a man. 